Alright, this is fourth grade module five, lesson 32, and in this lesson students are going to be subtracting a fraction from a mixed number. So we're talking like, you know, three and three-fifths take away one-fifth. Alright, and the idea is at this point uh, students are going to be using number lines, or the arrow method, or decomposition in order to make sense of this kind of problem. Ultimately, they're just going to be using this, the classic standard algorithm, but we don't want to just get there immediately and tell students, follow this rule and blindly follow it, uh, memorize it. But instead, what we're going to do is use these visual representations in order to build understanding. So let's get started. So here it says subtract model with a number line or the arrow way. And I got to tell you, I'm a, I'm a lover of the number line method over the arrow method for whatever reason. I just love the number line method. So the idea is we're going to draw our fractions and we need to locate where is six and three fifths. Well, you know, the, the beauty of the number line method is you really don't have to worry about it too much. So let's put five six, oop, whoa, six, and seven. And if first thing we're going to do is we're going to locate six and three-fifths. So what does that mean? Well, that means we have to take this interval, this one hole right here, and cut it into five pieces because the fraction has a denominator of five. And then we're going to locate six and three-fifths, which is right here. So that is six and three-fifths. And then because it says go backwards one-fifth, that's, that's pretty easy. We're going to go backwards one-fifth, and we're going to end up here. Well, where did we end up? We ended up at six and two-fifths. And the idea is, yes, can students just see a pattern? Yeah, oh, yeah, look at that. Three-fifths take away one-fifth is six and two-fifths. But we don't want to go jumping to that rule too quickly because then we get this down here. And we really want our students using a number line at this point. Um, we don't want them jumping straight to some sort of algorithm. So let's, let's plot this. So I'm going to put 6, 7, and 8. And because I need fourths, I'm going to cut this interval right here into four equal size pieces. And I want 7 and 1 fourth, which means it's going to live right here at 7 and 1 fourth. Now, the reason we don't want our kids just jump into some algorithm and instead we want them using number lines is this case right here. Because this says we have to go backwards 3 fourths, which means we need to cut this interval into four pieces. And now we can go backwards 3 fourths, 1 fourth, 2 fourths. Three fourths. We just went backwards three fourths. And where did we end up at? Well, we ended up at six and two fourths. Right there is six and two fourths because there's six, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. So six and two fourths. So the answer is six and two fourths. And for your high flying students, if they want, they can simplify that to six and a half. And actually, you get this beautiful visual representation of six and a half as well. So here we're being asked to use decomposition decompos to subtract the fractions. And basically, what that means is we're going to take, oh, let's say this problem, and which is a subtraction problem, and we're actually going to turn it into two subtraction problems. And uh, the way we're going to do it is we're going to decompose this second fraction so that, whoa, so that um, we knock, knock that first mixed number down to a whole number, and then we'll subtract again. For example, right now we've got two and two fifths. So we're going to decompose this four fifths so that we have a two fifths. And now we're going to subtract these two. So two minus, uh, I'm sorry, two and two fifths minus two-fifths gives us two. And now we're going to subtract the remaining two-fifths. So now we're going to subtract the remaining two-fifths. And we want students to be able to visualize two minus two-fifths is equal to one and three-fifths. Now, parents and teachers, you may need to show them on a number line. Here's zero, 
here's one, here's two, and to, uh, to go backwards two fifths, you're going to chop this into fifths, there's our fifths, and then go backwards two fifths. And when I go backwards two fifths, where do I end up? I end up at one and three fifths, all right? So that's essentially what this is saying is it's saying take this subtraction problem and turn it into two subtraction problems. The first one, knock it down to a whole number, and then you subtract whatever is left. For example, let's take a look at um, question C. All right, so I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit on question C. So what we're going to do is first we're going to uh, decompose in order to knock this guy down to a whole number. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decompose this to 1 sixth and 3 sixths. So there's our four-sixths, and the reason I chose one-sixth is because I wanted this fraction to match this fraction so that when I subtract four and one-sixth minus one-sixth, I end up with four. And now I'm ready to subtract three-sixths, and four take away three-sixths is three and three-sixths, which is three and a half. Now, the directions said they also wanted us to model this with a number line or the area way. And the way that's going to look is, and we have some kind of flexibility. There is no standard algorithm for how the number line is going to look. But we're going to draw our number line, and I'm going to, so let's, that's 4, 6. So that's going to be 5, 4, 3, let's say. And because everything says sixths, I'm going to cut all of this into sixths. There's sixths. And there's sixths. And we're going to start with four and one sixth because that's what the problem says so, right here. Four and one sixth. Now, to demonstrate on a number line this decomposition, first we're going to go backwards one sixth. Why? because that's what this first part of our decomposition was. So I just went backwards one-sixth. Now it says to go backwards three-sixths right here. So I'm going to go backwards three-sixths. Now I have a choice. I can either do three little hops. I can either go hop, 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 or I could just kind of do it in one big step. I'm going to do it in one big step just to kind of, I don't know, make it easier to see. So that is how we would model this decomposition on a number line. And you can see that our answer is 3 and a half because we are smack dab in between 3 and 4. All right. So that's how we would model it with our number line. That's a little different for us parents and teachers who learned um, in the old school kind of way. Just more of the same. The idea is uh, to decompose that second fraction. And so in this case, oh, because our first fraction is an eighth. No, let's do this one. Let's do H. Ooh, I like that one. Okay, so let's do H. So H says uh, because our first fraction is four twelfths, that means we're going to decompose this fraction to be four twelfths and three twelfths. That's how we maintain our 7 twelfths. So there's our 7 twelfths. We're now ready to do our subtraction. 9 and 4 twelfths subtract 4 twelfths gives us 9. Now we're going to subtract 3 twelfths. And 9 subtract 3 twelfths is 8 and 9 twelfths. Now if you wanted to show that on a number line, you could... There's a couple of ways, but um, let's, let's do the, the way that Eureka Math is expecting. So we're going to start with that 9 and 4 twelfths. So that's going to be 10, 9, and 8. All right. And the first thing we got to do is we have to cut it into twelfths. That's actually pretty easy because you cut it in half, then you cut each half into half. So now you have fourths. And then you cut those into three pieces, and that's how you get twelfths. So let's do that again. 
First, you cut it into fourths. Then you cut each fourth into three pieces, and that's how you get twelfths. And so the idea is, uh, let's model. So we're going to start with that nine and four twelfths. So that's going to be nine, and then one, two, three, four twelfths right there is nine and four twelfths. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to model that going backwards four twelfths. So going backwards four twelfths is one, two, three, four. So that gets, gets us to nine. So that's modeling going backwards four twelfths. Now we have to go backwards three twelfths because it says so right here. Now go backwards three twelfths. And that puts us right here going backwards three twelfths. And we end up right here. So clearly that's 8, because that's our whole number right here. But now we have to count. So that's 8, 1 twelfth. So that's 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, 5 twelfths, 6 twelfths, 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths. So that's 8 and 9 twelfths, and that's our answer. And, of course, that's what we knew all along. So here we're going to actually decompose the first number that uh, is being that is in the subtraction problem. So they're saying it's the total. So they're calling this guy the total. So let's model that. So we're going to look at that. And the idea is what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to decompose this guy pretty in a tricky way. So we're going to take a whole number out of that 5 and 2 fifths. So we're going to make it 4 and 2 fifths, and here's the one whole. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this one whole and subtract from three-fifths. I mean, subtract three-fifths from it. So one, one whole, take away three-fifths, is two-fifths. And then we had the original four and two-fifths. So now we need to add those two together, and you get four and four-fifths as your answer. Now, the idea is students might say, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are we adding? I thought we were supposed to subtract. And we did subtract. We subtracted the three-fifths right here, and that's how we got two-fifths. And now we need to add it to the rest of the problem or rest of that whole number or the rest of the total that we started with in the first place. But here's another thing you can do. You could say, well, let's draw this problem. So I'm going to go down here and let's draw 5 and 2 fifths and we are taking away, what were we taking away? Taking away 3 fifths. We're going to take away 3 fifths. So let's model that. So that's, okay, we're going to draw one hole, then we're going to draw one hole, then we're going to draw one hole, then we're going to draw one hole. And these are all supposed to look the exact same, and they don't. Sorry about that. And there's our, there's our five. Okay. Now that we've driv drawn our five, we now need to draw our two-fifths. So let's draw our two-fifths. So that's one hole, and then we're going to draw two-fifths. So we're going to cut it into five pieces and then shade in two of those five pieces. So technically, these um, are supposed to be completely shaded in because they're whole numbers, aren't they? All right. So we're going to shade these in. So there is our five and two-fifths. So I just drew five and two-fifths. So when we said, all right, we're going to take this 5 and 2 fifths and we're going to turn it into 4 and 2 fifths and 1. So there's our decomposition. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the 1 and we're going to subtract by 3 fifths. Now what does that mean? That means I'm going to take this whole number right here. I'm going to chop it into fifths, 1 two, three, four, five. So I just chopped it into fifths, and I'm going to take away three-fifths because it says so. So I'm going to chop up, uh, take away three of them. One, two, 
three. So I've just taken away those three-fifths. So that's the three-fifths I took away. Now what do I need to do? Well, I now have four plus the original two-fifths. Oh, wait, I want to show right here. This is one take away three-fifths, so that's two-fifths that we're left with, and that's this piece right here. So that's our two-fifths, so there's our two-fifths. So the question is, well, why did we have to add four and two-fifths plus two-fifths? So it's because, uh, let's see, here is our four, and here's the original two-fifths, and I'm going to write that down, four plus our original two-fifths, and then we have to add in the two-fifths that's left over from our subtractions right here. So we're going to add in two-fifths, and that's why the answer is four and four-fifths. Now, we knew that from the earlier example, but parents and teachers, I just wanted to show you graphically or visually what was going on, because some of our students might want to see, well, wait a second, why do we have to add that in? And that wraps up fourth grade, module five, lesson 32, where we're using some alternative methods mostly to make visual the idea of subtracting a fraction from a mixed number.